Oh, yes. Tuesday. Welcome in. Happy, happy, happy August 1st, everybody. That's Derek Gunn. I am Rob Ellis Gunner with the uh, with the new frames there or whatever's going on here. I like them. I, yeah, I got to fl- fl- flip the script every now and then. You know, I've like three or four pair that I use. And I said, you know what? Let me just flip it up just a little bit for today. Like it, man. Like it. What's up, Captain uh, Tony? We see you. What's up, Mr. Taz? Mood Yo. swing, Bella. Uh, Yo, Mr. Taz, you're muted, D-Gun. No, I'm not. I haven't been muted. Ask Rob. He can verify. You've been on fire. You have. Uh, you've been on a run, man. It's uh, it's been uh, it's been impressive. Your lack of muting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> Look, Captain Tony's back. We haven't seen him in a while. Mood swing, Bella's back. Haven't heard from her in a while. Yeah, nice. I like it's good seeing the folks we, we haven't we haven't hung out with in a little while in the uh, in the chat section. But yeah, I know I know this is it, it's part of your depression, Derek. When we when we're moving past the summer months now, we still have August. Let's not get crazy. But Ju- July in the rear view now. How are you feeling about that? You gonna be all right? No, nah, you know this is where depression sets in. I, you know I get more excited for football, but I know summer is almost behind. Where the heck did May and June and July go so quickly, man? I mean, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's now true. we're looking at August. You know, that means fall is slowly coming, in, closing in on us. Captain Tony, some of us work. Man, you're on a boat every day fishing. That ain't working. Come on, man. Well, I, you know, we got college football, real games before the end of this month. Think about that for a minute. I mean, hey, I the Hall of Fame game is Thursday. Oh, my God. Yeah. The NFL no. Hall of Fame game is what? This Thursday, right? Uh, is it this Thursday? It is this Thursday because Hall of Fame inductions are this weekend. Oh God, you're right. Yeah, August third. See, you're right. You know I mean? The Jets- eight o'clock. Yeah, Jets in Cleveland. See, yeah. see what I mean? It's man. it. It's here. It's here. It is wild. It is, man. Dude, I've only been fishing once this whole summer. Yeah, that's what is going on there. That's on you, man. You got you got to make it make it happen. You got to carve out some time for you. And what's up, Mister Taz? What is up, Sean? Father Sean, what's up, Richard? What is up, everybody else? Kevin, what's going on? Uh, yeah, you got you got to carve out a little time, man. Before you know it, it's good. Football is going to be upon us. You won't have any time. Man, look, man. Between every time I go to do something, Dad, can you babysit the kids? Mom, you know, can you babysit the kids? It's like, can I have a life? I'm not complaining. I love my grandchildren. Don't get it wrong. But there's sometimes we all need to decompress in our own ways. You know, it's for you. It's it's working. <laughs> for me, it's I just want to go wet a line. I don't even care if I catch anything. I just I, want to wet a line. I yeah. agree, man. I, I look, do it. You, look, can't you carve out and say, "All right, next, uh, whatever, next two, next Wednesday after the show, I'm I'm going to be I'm fishing." You, you can't do no. that. See, no. See, what I have to do is I just have to sneak out because if if I tell anybody I'm going somewhere, it's like, oh, but I thought you would be available to do this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? You thought you didn't tell me, Mr. Taz? We are teaching crews how to fish. There you go. Oh, there's. I have no doubt about that. All the grandkids want to how to fish. There's, but see, you know, crews like to run up and down the shore. He wants to chase bugs and all this stuff. And it's hard yeah. to get a mate that just to sit in the boat. I got you. It's, on, and even dock. shore fishing, it's hard to get a four year old just to, okay. Let us sit there in the water. They want to keep reeling it in. They don't get it. Just let us sit there in the water for a while. So. So when you take grandkids fishing too, you don't really get to fish because you're teaching them how to cast. Right. You're making sure nobody gets hooked in the butt, you know, or the leg or the arm or the, or, or the face. So it's not like you really get to focus just on fishing, you know. But, but I, I imagine that's got to be the hard thing because with fishing, with fishing, there's got to be a lot of patience. Oh, there's no, oh, no question. There's no question. And when you're yeah. talking about little kids like that, there ain't a whole lot of patience. No, but the biggest thrill is when that kid catches a fish for the first time. True. And you watch them reel it in. You know, even if it's small, like a sunfish or something, you just reel it in like it's a they watch you watch them reel it in like it's a whale. Yeah. You know? And 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 that to me, that's that's a great joy. But then you're sitting there going, Man, I just need a, a, a few more casts. I, mean, I, you know, I know. I've always said that, Kevin. I've always said a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. There's no question. <laughs> said that for years. It's true. That is so it's true. Therapeutic. Mm-hmm. I listen. Great. Whatever, whatever floats anybody's boat, man, whatever gives you peace. I, I'm, I'm down with, I, I'm serious, man. There, I have total sincerity. Um, wait, wait, let me ask you, what do you do to unwind? What do you do to relax? <laughs> you sound like my wife. Um, yes. it's an issue. Okay. It, it's an issue. I need to 
I need to start. I, I play. I play pickleball. Okay. Um, but I need to do a better job of taking care of me. Yes. I'm not good at that. I'm you serious. Have, I'm not good. You have not to learn good. to decompress, man. If, if you live, if you live your life every day, run, just running and, and worrying about a lot of trivial stuff. Yep. You know what? Medical experts say it's unhealthy. Ex, uh, uh, excessive stress is unhealthy. Yes, it's true. It is. Yeah. I I um I have to work on that for real. It's not a good it's not good. <laughs> for real, it's not good. So anyway, that's that'll be that's part of what August. I'm turning a new page. It's a new no, day. No, you're not. You're not <laughs> gonna do it. No. I can tell by the look on your face. No, you're not. Uh, you're not no, I have for real, I have to. Like it's no joke. Like it, it I have to start consciously making efforts. To do some stuff. So anyway, I, I will. I wouldn't. No, I will. I'm not just blowing you off. Like, do you I, have Do you have any built-in distractions? Do you have any hobbies? Um, I I uh, yeah. Uh, well, pickleball is one. You keep that's it. Uh, yeah. Not oh enough. Oh my goodness, that's pathetic. I know it's not good, dude. I tell you what. I tell you one of the most therapeutic things. It's it's funny as it sounds. Yard work. Yeah. Oh, I do that. I, like yesterday I cut the lawn. Uh, when we finish today, I'll go out. I'm going to go out and weed whack and I got to do a couple things. I got to trim some things up, like some branches. I got to trim them back. I do do that. And I actually like, I hate shoveling. I don't like doing leaves, but I, I yeah. have, I like cutting. I don't really don't mind cutting the lawn and weed whacking and stuff. Like I real, it's like, I, I like it. See, when you turn on a power tool and you can block out all the extraneous noise around you. Yep. To me, it's, it's, it's like music to the ears. Yeah. You know, because when you're cutting, you're focused on getting it right. Or when you're trimming it, it's stuff. it takes your mind off of other stuff. You know, yeah. even on a hot day, it just takes your mind away to other things. And, you know, now you know, it's, for me, it's always been fishing, yard work, and now grandkids. Right. You know, um, there's a lot of reasons I could get stressed or, you know, upset about things, you know, but I have distractions. To, I don't get, I don't get upset much. No, I, I, and I, um, I think that's smart. I think what I've begun to do, which I do better when I first tone says he runs a mile and a half every morning. That's awesome. See? Uh, yeah, no, that's good. That's great. I've, I've made it a point where I, I am not on my phone immediately. I'm not, well, I'm not sitting down to do work immediately. I give myself a little buffer of like 10 or 15 minutes where I do some other stuff that helps. For sure. That helps. I think if there's one thing I need to overcome and, and it's hard to do in our business is to just get away from my phone for a while. Yeah. Because my phone's always ringing. Or there's always notifications and something's happening. Um, you see what Mr. Taz said about you? Uh, he said, Rob watched the bland food channel, learning how to remove all flavor from his. I, I, I have, I'm good at that, too. Sills has a question. Uh, how many times a day do you catch yourself talking? <laughs> uh, I do. I do talk, uh, Dan, uh, several, several, my friend, uh, see, several. See. Yes. What yeah. about big sales sales? What do you do, man? I mean, are you consumed by your career to the point where you have no mental outlets? What do you do? What do you do to chill? What do you do to relax a little bit? What do you, anybody wants to chime in as well on the, uh, on the chat? Like, like I know, uh, father Sean's a big fly fisherman. Yeah. You guys will get along real well. He, he's an yeah. outdoorsman and he, he loves that kind of stuff. I know that for a fact. But you guys want to share with us what you do uh, to, to to sort of take away. I, I would. I'm, I've thought about a couple of things. Wait, wait, wait! Stop right there. You've thought about a couple of things. How many years have you been thinking about these things? Sill says he eats. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. All right. I so uh, two things I have considered doing. Okay, one, taking up gardening for real because I do like being out in the yard. All right. Two taking up a musical instrument, probably the guitar. Okay. And, and, and learning, just taking some lessons, get some fundamentals down. So that's two things I'm looking at. Well, why, now, don't you, why don't you do it? I, I, yeah, I have to, I got to figure it out time wise. It's right now, you know, the seven day a week schedule is not uh, what the, not what the doctor ordered. So we'll see what happens, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. In the, in the spring, I love getting out there with my daughter, Tina and, and we, we plant, like I plant all my wife's flowers, you know, a lot of flowers that she buys for all these multitudes of flower pots are annuals, which means they'll die off. That's an, that's an expensive hobby though. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. 
you know, we we buy all these flowers and we re and I replant all the pots in the front and the back for it and stuff. And then we have a garden, you know, uh, two two huge garden boxes that my son in law Alex and Tina built for yep. my wife for a Mother's Day gift, like four or five years ago. No, no, like you know, five years ago. Um, and man, this it's it's only in late July, dude. You should see the harvest of jalapeno peppers. Small cherry tomatoes and medium sized tomatoes, we've already got. My kitchen counter, my island in the kitchen is full of stuff from the garden. We got to figure out what to do with this stuff. Yeah. And then the other day, my wife made homemade salsa with the, with the tomatoes we grew in the garden. Oh, my goodness, man. You can taste the freshness right out of your garden compared to buying store bought cans of whole tomatoes, mm-hmm. you know, which is still good. But still, yeah, but right. see, that's, that stuff is therapeutic, man. Tilling, tilling the organic soils. Mixing them, planting them, strategically planting them, separating the plants X amount of inches because, you know, once they grow, they grow into each other, things like that. See, that's, see Rob, this is, I'm trying to help I, you. I'm, listen, I'm not, listen, you think I'm blowing you off. I'm sincerely not blowing you off. I'm not. I'm serious. Like, I'm telling you, I need to incorporate this stuff. I'm not even being like trying to be cute here. I need to incorporate this stuff into my life. I do for real, like real talk. I, like I have to do it. So I'm, I'm hearing you, man. Trust me. I'm here. And you're not the only one telling me this in my See, life. I'll just leave it at that. I think you know you're what too, I'm saying? I think, I think you're too tense. I think that's what it is. Wait, wait. Too tense and too intense. Yes. They're good. They're, they're, they're both tenses. Yes. <laughs> both tenses. Past, present, and future. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. So I will. If you guys want to throw some stuff our way, well, yeah, like I like JM uh, running while listening to audiobooks podcast. Ex- exercise. Robert says he exercises on his bike two to wow two to four hours a day. Okay. Oh, that's, that's too. That's too much for me. That's I can intense. do that. That's intense. That's I, intense. I, I appreciate it. I mean, if that's that's what works for you. Yes. Yes. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, my distressor is hunting and fishing over the weekends. That's Mr. Taz. There you uh, go. Coach Marcus smokes a brisket <laughs> right up your alley there. There you go. Uh, he does that. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, fat cat guy lived to be 109, ate a lot of cinnamon, garlic, onions, and just, oh, uh, I, I'll leave it at that. Anyway, so um, here's, <laughs> here's what we have today. We've got a lot going on today. Uh, we are now, let's see. Give you the exact. You'll love. I got. I work a countdown in for you, Derek. You'll Here we it. go. Uh, we are five hours and about forty-five minutes and change away from the baseball trade deadline. So okay. far, no movement for the Phillies. Uh, my guess is, I think we're looking at two things. I think we're looking at a an outfielder who can hit some home runs for you, and I think we're looking at a relief arm. I don't think either is going to be blow you away kind of stuff. I think it's going to be okay. All right, guy could help, which is fine, because here's the thing: it won't matter either way unless your your best players, your highest paid players, start playing. It won't matter either way. Absolutely. Um, they got a good win last night over Miami, and you know, props to Alec Bohm. Alec Bohm, the entire season has been a run producer for this team, and he did it again last night in big spots. As did Bryson Stott with a key sacrifice fly. Those two guys have been beasts, and. You know, as much as we're we're critical of other areas, I'm going to give some love to both of these two younger guys who, who were at, came out of the farm system, et cetera. You know, Bohm's at 66 RBIs now. He's on pace for 101. That's a hell of a season wow. you ain't okay, kidding. for him. And Bryson Stott has, has been their best, most consistent hitter all year and did exactly what was needed last night with the sack fly. So, and props to Taiwan Walker who becomes the first National Leaguer with 12 wins. And he didn't have his great stuff. He was not on his A game, but he gutted it out last night. Good win. Like, nice win by the Phillies last night. Good way to start a four-game series. They, they, they started out in a 2-0 hole, and they shut them down from there. And again, which is weird, the lesser names are carrying this team. And we've, you know, we've talked about this, the Bones, the Stotts, the Taiwan Walkers. But you're not getting that from the Nolas, the Wheelers, Yep. Um, the, the Turners, the Castellanos, all these guys. It's, it's just weird how this team has been able to find enough success to stay relevant. You know, they're back in second place in their division now. Um, they're back in the thick of the, of the wild card race as well. And it's the guy, it's the it's the lesser known guys who are holding down the fort. And then here it is, here it is, August, and we're still waiting for the big boppers, the heavy the heavy metal guys, or the heavy metal money guys. To, to, to start pulling their weight more consistently. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get much of anything from Aaron Nola for the rest of the season. I hate to say that, 
but I don't. Well, I think it just continues to be all over the place. I, yeah. I think it's, it's yeah. it looks good one start. It looks awful the next start. And you, you yeah. have no idea what's coming. I have some concerns about Suarez now pitching. Uh, you know, um, Kimbrell came out, you know, gave it, gave a nice, nice outing. Yeah. Um, but like we said, you're starting to see some wear and tear there. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this team. I really don't know what to make of this team. I mean, they have everything you need to do what you have to do to get to the playoffs. But because there's so much congestion for that wild card spot, every day we keep talking about who's in, who's out. Every day there's a jockeying for a position. Yeah. You know, up, down, up, down, back and forth. And the Phillies have the most talent of all those teams. And yet they're, they're struggling just to tread above water in a, in a wild card situation. Yeah. No, I, listen, I agree. I agree. And we'll, we'll see. I, I, here's what I think was interesting. And it's, you know, unlike him, I think. After Sunday's debacle, I give him credit for this. Rob Thompson had a team meeting, you know, and, and basically laid into these guys and told them, you know, what, what's going on here is totally unacceptable. So props to him for that. Um, you know, and they came out and played a little bit better baseball yesterday. Not not totally clean, but for the most part, better baseball yesterday. And we'll see if they can carry that thing over. And we'll, we'll get into the Phillies a, a little bit more. So the other important thing is, Derek, uh, pads today. Pads, they hit today. Okay? They are hitting. Oh, it's yeah, over now, yeah, but they hit. Yeah. Wait, is it really is it really hitting? Well, is is it really? Maybe maybe uh, there was physical contact. How's okay. that? There was right. touching. Okay. Uh, glor- glorify touching. <laughs> there was touching. Yes. Uh, so they did have pads on today. Did the Eagles? Um, here's here's you know seriously good news is Jalen Hurts is, has been like really sharp, you know, yep. and he keeps being very sharp. He's very good today, um, and a couple guys who are who are at least getting off to good starts here, like Quez Watkins and some others, are are continue to play well. Now, obviously, we're all going to look at Quez and say, "Do it in the game when it counts, when it gets real." Yeah. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, good day today. Brian Johnson spoke, new offensive coordinator, uh, talked about Hurts, talked about putting his own stamp and his own signature on things, while while also just understanding what they have in place here and how good it is already which is exactly the way you want them to take, you know, the approach. Hey, I'm going to do my thing. I'm not Shane Steichen, but I also understand that what we've been doing so far, I'm not trying to reinvent a wheel here, which I, I think is exactly the way that you want to go about it. This guy would have been, Gunner, had they not elevated him to offensive coordinator, he would have been snapped up by somebody as their OC. So the, he was a, he is a, an extremely hot commodity, you know, in this league. And if the Eagles offense, no, we're going to get into that in a second, but if the Eagles offense looks the way it has looked, yeah, he probably isn't long for here, but I don't care. That's a, that, We'll worry about that when that happens, and that's a good problem to have. Well, he, he's in a pressure cooker because what they did offensively last year is hard-pressed to equal, you know, but we're going to find out. He, he, he says he wants to put his own niche on that. We've talked about that all summer, and rightfully so, because it only enhances his probability of getting a head coaching job somewhere, if not after this season, uh, in a year down the road, you know, two years from now as well. But you don't want to try to put your own signature on it to the point where it disrupts the flow of what you've been able to do. You know, you look you look historically at some of the better offenses throughout the National Football League. When you came to teams like Peyton Manning with the Colts, John Elway with the Broncos, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre in Green Bay, uh, Tom Brady in New England, they did the same thing every year and dared you to stop them, and it couldn't. Yeah, Kansas City is a prime example of that with Patrick Mahomes, you know, under center. So now this Eagles has this Eagles offense has built something in a short amount of time under Nick Sirianni and his coaching staff. Now we're going to see. I want to see the consistency of it, and I want to see what kind of tweaks Johnson adds to it as well. You know, how much more creative can he get with this offense? Is it more motion? Any offense? Is it putting certain receivers uh, that have been exclusive to the outside, maybe lining them up in a slot? maybe in the backfield, different formations like that. Yeah, you know, I, I want to see how much variation there is because, you know, that old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Right, yeah. So, you well, here, here, here's the fine line you walk. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I totally agree with that foundation. Yeah. But you know teams having an entire offseason to study what the Eagles did are yes. going to try to counter whatever yeah. you were doing, right? Yes. And this is where he and Nick Sirianni and the rest of the staff have to be creative enough to put wrinkles and twists on yes, things yes. while still playing to your strengths. That's really where this this is all about. 
I mean, seven, seven of your games this year are against defenses that finished in the top 10 last year. And I think there's another two or three games where defenses finish either number 11 or number 12. So you're facing some good, much better defenses across the board this year than you faced last year. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that that's the other part. You're right. You, you are, in addition, your, your defense is going to have more of a challenge stopping the other team's offense. Yes. So you're going to have more pressure on you to score points offensively and or – you might have, you know, you may not, not have a, it might be a, a case, at least against some of these good offenses where your defense, you know, maybe gets scored on quickly. You're right back on the field. Like there just could be very different circumstances than you had last year. Or with the uncertainty of what we're going to see on defense, even though the personnel looks great on paper, if you have some offenses that are slowly sustaining the clock and controlling the clock, all of a sudden they become much lower scoring games. Yeah. You know, and for an offense that likes to score 28, 30 points a game, now you've got to find a way to score and win games with a lower point total, 23, 24 point games, 20 to 17 type games. And I'm saying this team, this offense has a capability of doing that, but you're not going to get as many possessions of the ball, which means you're going to have to take advantage of more opportunities with lesser volumes of footballs in your hand. That's going to, that's going to, that, that comes into play as well. Good point. And, and look, it's much easier to do your thing and dictate from ahead like you were Absolutely. almost all the time last year. Absolutely. And this is, you could be behind sometimes where you're forced into doing some things or, Hey, we got to throw, we went off to, we, we don't have an option to run or whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's, again, this is going to be part of the challenge that these guys are going to have for sure. So that's going to be something to keep your eye on with that in mind, Derek, here's the question of the day for the Eagles. Yes. For you and for everybody in the chat, everybody listening, everybody streaming, will the Eagles average more less or the same points per game as they did last year last year it was 28.1 per game which was third in the nfl they were a top three scoring offense will they average more less the same 28.1 per game in your estimation i would say about the same okay. and i would say if they would average about the same that's going to win at least 10 11 games for this team and i've said i think they're going to go 11 and 6 you know at, at 28 points a game is nothing nothing to 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 um to to smirk at, you know that that's a high volume offense if you can average twenty eight points a game, which means there are going to be games you're going to score over twenty eight points, and there are going to be games you score under twenty eight points. But I still think this offense is deep enough, fluid enough, to make the big plays when they have to, to get the big first downs, to control the clock with their running game when they have to, to score sevens and not settle for threes when they have to. Um, I think about the same is about right for this offense. Some people might think they might average 30 plus a game. I'm not going to discount that as well. But I think, as we just mentioned, with, with them playing a better collection of defenses across the board this season, coordinators have more film on them now to watch, to study better what they've done in the past, what they will probably try to continue to do. Um, I think 28 points is a good number for yeah, a high I mean, offense. Gunner, put it in perspective. So uh, Kansas City averaged 29.2, Buffalo 28.4. There you go. That's it. I mean, they're the only two teams that had scored more points than the Eagles last year. Yeah, I, I look, I, I would be perfectly happy if they were right on the money where they were last year. That, yeah. that tells me, because I think that's going to keep, you're either in the top three or top five, if that's the case. And, and that, should, that should be good enough. You're asking a team to put a 30 spot up as an average that's man. That's a lot. You're asking a lot right there. And, and at Kansas City did it, but they have and at 29. But they have Patrick Mahomes. So if they're in that range of 28, maybe it's a point less or 29. I'm fine. Uh, I, I I'm with you. I think it's going to be right around that same number. I I think the biggest thing with Hertz is we're, we're going to get into the offensive storylines in a minute. But the biggest thing with Hertz is I think there's a, a feeling among people like he can't get better. I don't agree with that. I don't either. I, I really think that he can get better. I think he wants to get better. I think he will get better. I, I'm a firm believer in this guy because of the work ethic and the talent and the people that he's surrounded by. So I am a total believer. Hey, uh, uh, you know, Father Sean has a good question for you as well. You know, yeah, yeah this is a good one. All right. So uh, how about on defense, Rob? What was yeah. the average points allowed last year? And will they stay there or not? Okay, I like that. I like that. So I'll give you what they what they averaged last year uh, defensively because they were look they were they were not as good defensively, but they were still good. Okay, so the Eagles last season allowed twenty point two. All right, which I believe it was tied for seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tied for eighth. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, or, no, it is seventh, actually. I'm sorry, with the Commanders. Uh, so they, 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 but that's, it's really close. I mean, the teams, the, the, you know, the Jets and the Cowboys guy gave up 20.1, and then it was the Eagles at 20.2. Um, I think it's going to be more if I'm going to answer that one. I think it's going to be more. I think we're looking at that, that jumping about two points at least somewhere around there, maybe three points. I, I think that the offenses they're playing are better. As I said all along, I don't think they're going to start off as strong as they're going to be later mm-hmm. because of the new faces. As good as I think Jalen Carter is and, you know, Nolan Smith and all that, it's going to take these guys, they're rookies, they're going to make mistakes that they're going to learn from. Um, yeah, I think they're going to give up more points per game. I feel pretty strongly about that. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah, I think it's going to be more. Um, I, I'm on the same page with you. I think the when you have the influx of, of personnel, you're talking seven new starters. Um, right now, I don't see them being better in terms of defending the middle of the field. Um, in a lot of ways, um, you're playing better offenses, better offensive coordinators. Um, and I do think they're going to give up more points. But because of the firepower that they have on their offense, they have the capability of matching anybody they face point for point, you know, and then some, especially when you're home and you got that 12th man, the crowd backing you up as well. That's a huge factor. But I do think you may go up to 23, 24 points a game they give up this this season. And especially early on until that defense settles in and you have you know exactly what you're looking at. And Sean DeSai, Matt Patricia know who they want to count on in certain situations pertaining to down and distance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a little higher, but that, that's OK, because when you look at the better teams in the league, a lot of them, even in the heyday of New England, they, they weren't always a shutdown defense. You know, there were times when they gave up more points, but because they had that dude named Tom Brady and that offensive flow. They could outscore anybody in the league when they had to, you know, and when you have a quarterback like a Tom Brady or a Jalen Hurts, as he showed last year, and you have two minutes left on the clock, who else would you want to have the ball in the hand? Yeah, I, I agreed. Yeah. You know, I agree. You're right. Greatness can make up for a lot of different things oh, you know, on either yeah. side of the ball. Right. And, and you could have the best game plan in the world as a defense. And if it's Patrick Mahomes, it isn't going to matter. You could do everything right on defense. How many times have we seen somebody covered like a blanket and, and, and a guy like Mahomes or Brady or somebody else drops a dime in there. There's nothing yep. you can do sometimes. Can't and be. I think, you know, Jalen Hurts is, is – is you could have everybody covered. Hurts could take off. You could blitz Hurts. He gets around it. He buys himself a little bit of time. He throws a pass for, you know, for a big shot, whatever. I mean, all these things can happen for sure. And, again, let, let's, let's take a look at this thing. So the Eagles are facing – just to give you an idea of some of the firepower that they're going to be facing this year. Okay. Uh, Cousins, whatever you think about him, Kirk Cousins puts up points, okay? And he's got Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers, Tua if healthy. Dak Prescott, who has their number. Mm -hmm. Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, you know, whatever it looks like in San Francisco, probably Purdy, but whatever it looks like there. Uh, Geno Smith, who had a real bounce back year last year. Um, You know, so they're, they're facing some, you know, some pretty good firepower, certainly better than it was last year. Um, and that's to be expected. You win a lot, then all of a sudden your schedule gets that much tougher. Um, but if I'm Jalen Hurts and I have to scramble to buy time and I'm looking downfield, I have a thousand yard receiver trying to free himself over here, another thousand yard receiver over here, one of the top three to four tight ends in the game scrambling as well, and the running backs coming out of a backfield like Gainwell and, and DeAndre Swift. I feel pretty good about my chances of having a successful ratio more so than an incompletion. Yeah, you know this offense is loaded, you know, with options, and you know that's why I say Jalen Hurts at 24 years old finished number two in the MVP voting. That shows you the kind of respect he already commands. Right, he's coming back his third year as a starter, and number in his second year in an offense that just exploded on the scene. Mm -hmm. Now you've added to that firepower with two different, two more running backs. Two different style running backs. You've got a quartet of running backs that are of all di- all different styles. You have arguably the best offensive line in the game, you know, protecting you and opening holes for your running backs. What else could you ask for? There are not many teams are that that are that complete offensively in the National Football League. This team has everything. They're going to have to win some shootouts, no question about it. Yeah. They're going to be involved in some shootouts. Can they win more of them than they lose based on defense? Don't know. Remains to be seen. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's get a timeout. Let's keep the uh, the offensive discussion rolling. Uh, we will do that. We're going to look at storylines, whether that's Hurts' improvement, whether that's you know the running game by committee. 
Can AJ and Devontae get better? Quez having a good camp thus far. Who else emerges? Uh, we heard about uh, Nagata playing very well. Goddard staying healthy. Right guard spot. Brian Johnson putting a stamp on things. We'll get into all that when we come back. You don't want to go anywhere. We keep the football rolling. He's D Gun. I am Rob Ellis. On this Tuesday, let's talk about Bravo Pizza of Havertown. Yes, Bravo Pizza. Thrilled that they are a part of the show and the channel as well. I've been going there since 1985, and they've been family owned since that time as well. They have just an unbelievable crew with Alex and all of the folks working there. They do an amazing job. Fresh food every single day, 20 different styles of pizza. Slices to go. I love the upside down personally, but they have the you name it, they'll make it specialized pizza however you want it. And they don't just do pizza. The, the, the great variety there. They have fresh pasta, sandwiches, wraps, wings, salads. They're also committed to the community. They have fundraisers for charities, for schools, for little leagues where the proceeds go to those organizations. You can follow them at the Bravo Pizza of Havertown on Instagram and Facebook for daily specials and promotions. They're at 1305 Westchester Pike in the Manoa Shopping Center in Havertown. 1305 Westchester Pike, Manoa Shopping Center, Havertown. Give them a call, 610-446-3810. 610-446-3810. Bravo Pizza of Havertown.